Harry asked an excellent question the other day. Do you have to revise equally for each subject? And the short answer is no. And the long answer involves quietly dropping some subjects. This is not going to be a popular video with some of your teachers. So to those teachers, I am apologising up front. I'm really, really sorry. I don't want to make this video. I don't like making this video, but it is going to be really useful for some students' mental health to do this. So we are generally talking about GCSE here because at A-level, you can't really get away with not doing one of your subjects because you only have three, maybe four subjects to do and they are all important. And if you are aiming for one of the top universities, then you need to be getting like 9, 10, 11, 12, grade 9s, then this also, this video isn't for you. We are talking about students that are maybe doing option subjects that they don't really want to be doing. So when I did my GCSEs, I did 10. I can never remember them all. So I did maths, two science, two English, always a five, the core five. Then I did French and German, religious studies, economics, graphics. Did I? Maybe I didn't do religious studies. I did geography. Geography, not religious studies. See, I can't even remember. And these days, the majority of people don't even do 10. Most people do eight or nine subjects. So if you are doing 10 subjects, and maybe like I did, as an example, I did two languages subjects. If you were to quietly drop one of those subjects, nobody would ever really know. But it would mean that you had a lot less work to do. So let me just backtrack a little bit and explain. When you're revising, there are high priority and what I call high priority and low priority subjects. There are some subjects you have to revise for. Fortunately, there is no way we can get around for this. You have to do your English and maths. Um, because they are a requirement, generally if you get one job, you have to have five um, GCSEs, um, a good pass, including English and Maths. You have to do that. Um, you also have to do things that you want to do for A-level, so if you want to go and do Chemistry for A-level, you need to get a good GCSE in Chemistry, or if you want to go and do History for A-level, you need to get a good History. So that, that section of high priority subjects is going to be different for everybody. You also need to Focus on the core subjects like your sciences that will be missed if they're not on your CV in the future. What we are talking about with low priority subjects that you can consider, and I hate saying this because I know some issues are going to hate me for doing this, consider quietly dropping are the things, the options that nobody would miss if you didn't do them. So if in five years time, in 10 years time, if you didn't write that grade on your CV, would anybody miss it? They would miss science, they would miss English, they would miss maths, and if you only wrote six down, that would definitely look suspicious. But if, like me, you do 10 and there are two languages in there, maybe you don't need to write both those languages down on your CV in the future. Now, this is a risky strategy. It is definitely not for everybody because if you quietly drop something that actually you might have got a really good easy grade in and then you work really hard in something else and you don't get that grade, there is a massive, massive risk here. So do not do this just like lightly. Do not do this without any consideration. Do not do this straight away. Um, but I will tell you that for my A-levels, this is now, I did four A-levels, biology, chemistry, maths and further maths. And about halfway through, I decided actually further maths was just way too much work for me. I was really stressing about it. It wasn't really good for me. I couldn't cope with the workload. So I wanted to drop further maths. Um, the school was not happy about this subject. Um, but they said that I could just like not turn up and uh, just sit the exam. So I still did further maths, but I didn't do further maths, if that counts. Somehow, though, I still got a D in it. Do not know how that happened. Really don't know how that happened. Anyway, 
The subjects that you need to focus on are English and maths, your your core subjects, things that we miss, so like sciences, the ones you want to do for A level, and anything that I know you can hate me for this, but anything you're particularly struggling and you need to drag that grade up for. But there might be this tenth subject that you just had to pick because you had to fill in your options, you didn't really want to do it. Um, you've got no interest in it, you don't really want to do it for A-level, and for that, I'm telling you, you can do less revision. Massive apologies to teachers of all of these subjects, I'm really, really sorry, but if you're a student and you are struggling with time management, if you are a student and you're struggling with the workload and it's seriously affecting your mental health, then maybe you don't do any revision for your 10th option subject that you really didn't want to do but you had to pick anyway that would be a low priority subject when you are making when you are doing your vision i love making revision timetables i think they're really really useful and one of the things that i have done when i've made that the study plan is for you is actually just putting you a list so you can keep track of things because the temptation will always be to revise subjects that you like to revise subjects that you're good at and then forget to revise maths for some particular reason. But these are the things that you have to revise for. So in answer to your question, Harry, no, you do not revise for every single subject equally. You need to revise lots for English and maths, the core science, the core subjects, sciences, things that we miss. You need to revise lots for the things that you want to do at A level, the things that you need to get onto the course for next year. Um, it's always worth having a look to see how many GCSEs you need to get onto the course for next year. If you only need seven or if you need eight or if you need nine or if you do actually need to pass 10 GCSEs, then you need to prioritise your time so that you actually pass 10 GCSEs. But if you don't and then get one subject that you don't really want to do and you just had to pick it to fill it in your options, quietly dropping it and please don't tell your teachers this because they will not like me for this but actually doing less revision for that subject doing less revision for that exam thinking about the night before the exam should you be revising for your german exam the next day or should you actually be revising for your maths exam which is two days ahead of that um Massive apologies to all the German teachers out there because I use that in this example because that's what, if I was to do this, I would have quietly dropped. What did I get for my GCSEs? I got A stars in science and maths. And then I can't remember. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.